Hi, it's Miss Parrot, and this video is about classifying bacteria. In the next few minutes, we're going to be looking at some bacteria basics, followed by four main ways that scientists classify bacteria. Bacteria are unicellular prokaryotes, meaning that they're only made up of one cell, and that this cell does not have a nucleus or any membrane-bound organelles. Here's an example of one here with some flagella and pili sticking off of the cell wall that coats the bacteria. Bacteria are coated in a molecule called peptidoglycan, and some have more and some have less. And we'll look more into that later as we go into classification. Bacteria are very small. In fact, they're typically about 1,000 nanometers, which is about 50 times smaller than any regular like plant or animal cell that you and I have. So they're very, very small, um, and they reproduce asexually with a process called binary fission. And in binary fission, your one bacteria will replicate its circular DNA. So initially it had one, now it has two, and then the cell membrane and cell wall will split, and now you have two genetically identical daughter cells that are the same as the original parent cell. If you're thinking about bacteria in the realm of disease, if you get a bacterial infection, that's usually localized to one place. So say you got a cut on your hand, and or you stepped on a rusty nail, um, and you got bacteria in there, the bacteria are going to stay there. They're going to, you know, um, grow and reproduce, but the infection will stay on your hand area. Uh, and you can usually treat those very simply with antibiotics. Antibiotics are medicines prescribed by doctors that typically help um, reduce infection or reduce population by keeping this binary fission from happening. So it'll either disrupt uh, some of the structure of the cell wall or keep some of the inner workings of the cell from being able to operate so the binary fission can't happen. So antibiotics can be used to treat bacterial infection, but they cannot be used to treat viral infections. Now let's look at the four ways that we can classify bacteria. Okay, first we can classify them by shape. Bacteria can be round, rod-shaped like a pickle or a hot dog, or a spiral, and this spiral is sometimes very tight and then sometimes is long and looser and more flexible. The round ones are called coccus or cocci shaped bacteria. Some examples is, um, are streptococcus and staphylococcus. So coccus is right in the name. So even if you've never seen a streptococcus bacteria before, you can know based on the name that it is spherical in shape. Others, the rod-shaped ones, and often these rods or any of these can have like additional flagella or some other apparatus coming off the sides, um, but the fundamental shape is a rod. These are called bacillus, or the plural is bacilli, and an example in real life is lactobacillus. Lactobacillus are rod-shaped bacteria that break down lactose, which is the sugar in milk. Comma-shaped ones are called Vibrio, and a very common example is Vibrio cholerae, which is what causes the disease cholera. And then there are spiral. Another name for spiral is helical-shaped, um, like noodle-looking bacteria. And these can be spirilla or spirochete, depending on, again, the rigidity or flexibility of the um, spiral itself. An example here is Helicobacter pylori. This is another one where the name Helicobacter tells you it's a bacteria with a helical or spiral shape. And pylori, your pyloric valve is in your stomach, and so that lets you know that this is a bacteria that actually is one of the main causes of stomach ulcers. And so as we go through, there's going to be a lot of super sassy science words, and I want you to let the word tell you what it means. Many of these words can be broken down into smaller parts, so let yourself do that and don't get overwhelmed by big words. 
Now for the second way. As I said in the first slide, um, cell walls of bacteria are made up of a, a, it's a molecule called peptidoglycan. It's a carbohydrate, but with some amino acids coming off of it. And peptidoglycan, some bacteria have like very thick lots and lots and lots of peptidoglycan. And if they do have a lot of peptidoglycan, then they are called gram positive. And that's because there is a test called the gram stain test, and it takes a molecule called crystal violet, violet like purple, and if it is a bacteria with lots of peptidoglycan, those purple molecules are gonna get stuck in between the web of the peptidoglycan. And so when you look at it under a microscope, it's gonna stain and you're gonna be able to see it as purple or like bluish. On the other hand, if it's a, um, a bacteria with less peptidoglycan, I mean, it has some, but not nearly as much, that crystal violet isn't going to stick in there so much. So that's going to be gram negative. When you run that gram test, the crystal violet's not going to stick in there. And so it'll be red. You'll see it as red under a microscope. So whether it's gram positive or gram negative is the second way to classify bacteria. And the last two ways is looking at what it needs to survive. So does it need oxygen or not? And then where does its nutrients come from? Oxygen is often used to help a, any organism break down the food energy it has and get that energy out so it can be usable. So some bacteria need oxygen to break down those food molecules to get energy. And those that do need it are called aerobic. Think about if you do an aerobic workout, you're breathing a lot, you need a lot of oxygen. So aerobic bacteria also need oxygen to break down their food for energy. Then there are ones that do not need that oxygen and they are called anaerobic bacteria. They do not need oxygen in order to break down their food for energy. But where does that food come from? There are multiple places where um, bacteria can get their food and depending on that nutrient source, that's the last way that we can look at to classify them. So there is light. So some are, some bacteria, again, there's some really super sassy science words coming, but just break them down in their smaller parts and you'll be able to easily figure it out. So photoautotrophic bacteria, it's a very big word, but they get their food from light. Let's take a second to break that down. Photo means light. So anytime you see photo, you know that it means light. Auto means self. And troph means food. So it makes its food all by itself from light. So these are also called photosynthetic um, bacteria. So photoautotrophic bacteria get their nutrients, their energy from light. Chemoautotrophic, so we have autotroph again, which means that they make their own food, and they get that like energy source from chemicals. Now these are often, these are like really crazy bacteria that can be found in places where light can never reach, so like the deep parts of the ocean. Um, there are chemoautotrophic bacteria, and they use energy from molecules like H2S, hydrogen sulfide, that seeps out of the bottom of the ocean, and they use those chemicals to make their own energy molecules. And then there are um, bacteria that we're very familiar with, and these are heterotrophic bacteria. Hetero means different. Homo means the same, and hetero means different. And so a heterotroph gets its food from something different than itself usually other currently living or formerly living things. Now, if it is a pathogenic bacteria, it is a pathogen, that means it is gonna cause a disease. That's because that bacteria is getting its energy from some other organism. If it's a bacteria that's making you sick, then you are, it is in a parasitic um, negative 
relationship with you. It's getting its nutrition from you and you are not being helped. Whereas sometimes we are in a positive, beneficial relationship with bacteria. And in that case, this is a symbiotic relationship. This is a symbiotic bacteria. Like for instance, the ones that live in our guts. So we have trillions of bacteria. They live in our guts. They actually help us break down our food and they take a little off the side to support themselves, but they are a help to us. So those are symbiotic bacteria. And then finally, there are the decomposing bacteria, which are called saprophytic bacteria. And they live off dead organisms or dead and decaying tissues. So that's four ways, four ways to classify bacteria by nutrient source, um, whether or not they need oxygen, cell wall composition, gram positive or negative, and their shape. Next time you come across a bacteria, uh, maybe you can figure out all the different ways that you could classify it.